Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Among the Stars Slotty Perfume Reviews. So today, I make sure I'm happy to be, finally, bringing you guys my review of Katy Perry's Mad Love. This perfume launched this year, 2016, and is Katy's 8th fragrance, and is the first spin-off to last year's Mad Potion. So... I'm going to tell you guys about the perfume, I'm going to review the perfume, and then afterwards I have a wee bit of a rant. Um, I want to go on about this fragrance and whatnot. So, um, the box this time, they actually changed it quite a bit. So this was the Mad Potion box. And size comparison, that's the Mad Love box. So, if you follow boxes enough and you care, which some people do, some people don't, this box is literally the size of, oh my word, the insert, if I can get my camera to focus, the insert on the inside of this box, right there, that's exactly how big this box is. So, package minimalization, it isn't a terrible thing. Um, I think I would have preferred them to cut the back off and just make it, like, slightly slimmer. That, that didn't even do what I wanted it to do. Make it slightly slimmer and maybe a little bit shorter or whatever, but I don't prefer that they, I don't like that they scrunched it this way. Just because for box presentation on my shelf, this just looks like a whole new uh, campaign and pillar than it does with Mad Potion. So, the box for Mad Potion looks like this. Or Mad Love, oh my lord. And it says Katy Perry's Mad Love and kind of this heart embossed um, logo. It fades from almost a white to a darker pink. On the bottom it says Eau de Parfum Natural Spray, 30 milliliters, one ounce. Um, and then we've got the Cupid's Arrows um, lining the sides. And then the sides of the box are actually um, marble looking, both sides. The back as well has that kind of marble look to it, and then the top has this heart logo on it. So the bottle looks like this this time, and we have Katy Perry's Mad Love right there. Instead of it being a round wax stamp, it is a um, heart-shaped wax stamp. you got the Cupid's arrows wrapped around the top, and then you've got the marble lid. Um, comparison to Mad Potion from last year, I actually prefer the Mad Love bottle over the Mad Potion bottle. Just because I feel like they, this looks cheaper than this does. They both don't look very expensive, which kind of bothers me. Especially if you're paying thirty-some dollars for these that they don't look very expensive. Um, would I have enjoyed Mad Love and Mad Potion to be continuations in the Killer Queen line? Yes. Um, even in my Mad Potion, when before Mad Potion came out, I had an edit of what Mad Potion could look like as a Killer Queen spinoff. So, I like that she's doing a whole new flanker. I just wish these bottles were a little bit more expensive looking. And they, they do look cheap, but that is kind of what it is. So, um, there is some controversy going around about this fragrance and its name. Um, which... I can see, I can agree with, I poke fun at myself, but in the realiza realization of everything, I don't think this was the intention. So, Katy Perry's Mad Love, um, the words Mad Love are quite funny because Kate, uh, there was a spat going around about um, Taylor Swift and Katy Perry, and Taylor Swift supposedly wrote this song called Bad Blood, which, in the opening line of Bad Blood, it says, Baby, we used to be, or Baby, we had bad blood, we used to be mad love. Um, so people are pulling that as, uh, oh, well, this is Katie's response to Taylor's song about her. And do I think that Katie went in and said, I want to call my one new perfume Mad Love because I want to poke fun at Taylor? No. Do I think it worked and she realized it after she did it? Yes. I don't think that that's undeniable 
there is no way that Katie released this perfume without knowing that coincidental tie-in. I just think that Mad Love was the next addition in the Mad line. Um, I think she might have... There might have been a po slight possibility that she had Mad Potion. She knew she wanted to do a spin-off to it. Mad Love would have worked because she could do a whole concept behind it. And maybe Mad... The Bad Blood had a little bit of a play into that. Who knows? We'll never know. Only Katie and the co the team at Cody know that. But, um, everything I feel like with this fragrance is a little bit more conceptualized than the previous one. Mainly because these bottles, this box and this bottle, go together by the color. But other than that, there's not really a whole lot tying them together. This one, on the other hand, you've got the wax heart that's here is also the wax heart that's there. You've got the marble here. It's also the marble here. So, like, everything kind of conceptualizes a lot better. Um, and the ad for this fragrance, we see Katie on a pillar is a marble pillar. Um, everything's kind of pink and pretty. So, I feel like everything flows a little bit better with this one than it did with the previous one. And maybe everything was thought out a little bit more with this one than the previous one. So... Notes for this fragrance. Top notes are Lady Apple Sorbet, Mouthwatering Maya Strawberry, and Pink Grapefruit. Middle notes are Bleeding Heart Flower, Fresh Peony Petals, Sunkissed Jasmine, with base notes of Seductive Sandalwood, Skin Musk, and Invigorating Coconut Wood. So, part of the reason this review hasn't been out for so long, and part of my rant at the end of this video, are about the notes. Now, I will say I didn't know that there was a peony note in this, hence to why my production image is taken in peonies, just because my nose with being perfumed so long could pick up that. Um, but I, I did not want to do a review based on what I could smell, and I did not want to do a review based on um, three notes that were listed on Coles' website. So, I will go into my review, and then we'll rant later about that. So... When you first spray it, I can see the, the Lady Apple Sorbet, um, but I think probably the strawberry and the grapefruit are most prominent. You kind of get that citrusy zing in the very beginning from the grapefruit, and you get the fruitiness of the strawberry. Um, definitely, I would say that the heart flower, or the bleeding heart flower, and the peony notes that are in the heart are probably the two most dominant notes in this fragrance. It is a very soft floral. Um, I do get a little bit of that sun-kissed jasmine. But once you get down the dry down, the sandalwood, I feel like, is probably the most prominent note. Um, but it's not straight up sandalwood, and I think part of that is the invigorating coconut wood behind it. Um is changing the wood a little bit. This fragrance doesn't really have a coconut scent to it. Um, I could see where someone could smell a little bit of coconut in there, but honestly, it doesn't really have a coconutty scent. Um, the musk, it does add a little bit of a muskiness to the fragrance, but it is a skin musk, so it is a little bit lighter, and that part of the musk is a little bit closer to the skin. But overall, I would say definitely it is a floral fragrance with a little bit of a backing of the fruit and the, um, the wood, but mostly you're getting those peonies and the um, bleeding heart flower. I love that they put bleeding heart flower in here because that's not something you see in fragrance very often. Um, there's not really a vanilla note to this fragrance. It's not really. Um, it is, is a little bit more complex and. Uh, a lot different than this, so, um, not that this was bad in any way, shape, or form, I actually really liked this, um, but I feel like this one's a little bit more complex, a little bit more thought out, um, my friend Lizzie said that she felt like this was Meow 2.0, which I could see that, but Meow had a little bit more of a vanilla and fruitiness to it, but this I feel like is the grown-up version of Meow because it's more florals and more mature. Um, this isn't a mature fragrance at all. I'm not trying to say that it's like super old whatever, but um, it is a little bit more upscale than the fruitier interpretations that we've gotten from Katie in the past. 
this just has a little bit more prominent on the, the uh, floral notes than we would. I almost feel like this fragrance could have fit um, into the Purr and Meow lineup um, because they were both like Purr was a little bit stronger on the florals as well. It had a little bit of spice to it. Um, Meow being that kind of sweet vanilla fruity floral. I feel like this could have been another interpretation into it but I also see it as Mad Love because it is very love centered. Um, and I feel like this is kind of a sensual, sexy love fragrance. So, um, definitely say this would be a spring, daytime, springtime scent. Um, lasting power, it does last probably about seven hours on my skin, six to seven hours. Um, I wish it would last a little bit longer. It's not terrible lasting power, but it could last longer. Um, and probably, like I said, definitely a summer, springtime scent. Um, I would say that this fragrance age range would probably be in the 20s. Um, but I feel like all ages could pull it off. Um, definitely out of the bottle, that strawberry is probably the, the most prominent fruit note that you're going to get. So, um, there's my review of Katy Perry's Mad Love. Now for my rant about this perfume. So, I got this perfume 20 days ago today. Um, I've had this perfume sitting on my shelf and all I've known about it is its notes were luscious fruit, precious wood, and musk. That was all I was told. That was all that was on Coles' website. And anyway, I tried to contact the Katy Perry fragrance team and resolve to get information about this fragrance. Um, they were nice. Like, I mean, they were professional, so it's not like I'm downgrading them in the professionality of it. But when I first told them I was getting it, they said that the notes would be revealed very soon. Um, I said, could you possibly tell me a little bit when? Because I really wanted to review this fragrance almost three weeks ago. Um, and they said that by the end of the week, the notes would be revealed. No notes were revealed. I left it alone. I messaged them again. They said that they weren't releasing them yet, but very soon they would. Um, please check back this weekend. I messaged them back that weekend. Got no response. They messaged me back the following Monday saying that um, they were sorry, but they weren't releasing the notes yet. But please stay tuned. They, they were excited that I was excited about it. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and then... I got told the end of the month, and I messaged them again a couple days ago saying, okay, when are we getting the notes for this, because I really like the notes for this, and they were like, well, we basically were like, we don't know, Katie's not releasing them yet, so we're sorry, and what pissed me off about the entire situation wasn't the fact that I wasn't getting the notes, it was the fact that the perfume was out on the market, I bought it directly off Cole's website, so I didn't get it in any other way, shape, or form, um, it's not like they sent it to me and I was waiting on them to send me the notes. I literally bought the perfume off Coles' website. Um, so, I don't understand their concept of let's put a perfume out there and wait 20 days to release the notes. Um, it's just a dumb marketing strategy in my opinion. There was a lot of hype going into it right when it went on the Coles' website and there was a lot of, you know, the ad got released and stuff like that. So... They should have done a little bit more back then, and they updated their Facebook page and the Twitter page to it, and were tweeting and stuff about Mad Love, but not doing anything, and then they did, like, before they did, like, a fragrance uh, chat about it. After everybody knew Mad Love was out, they did a fragrance chat and didn't talk about the Mad Love at all in the fragrance chat. So I feel like they missed a lot of opportunities on this, and... I hope it's something that they learn from because, I, I mean, it's a multi-million dollar company. They're going to do whatever the hell they want. Who, like, Lil Gay Boy in Iowa has no effect on that. But I just think that there there was a lot of misses that could have been done. Um, granted, I was offering, you know, I'm doing a review of this free of charge. I'm not asking you guys for anything besides notes. I'm not asking you guys to pay me any compensation. So, I feel like notes were the one thing that they could have gave me because everything else was already released. So, anyway... I never ended up getting the notes from Katy Perry's fragrance team. Um, they actually were online, like, last night sometime in my midst of 3 a.m. checking the internet. Um, I noticed that the Katy Perry fragrance website was updated to the Mad Love. Um, so all the notes were on there, and that's how I was able to get it. But still, it's the fact of, like, the sheer stupidity that... I was felt like I was going through it because it was basically 
there wasn't a date I was ever given and nothing was ever concepted out to me saying, yes, this is when you'll get the notes. So, I'm sorry, that's just kind of how I feel about the entire situation. I feel like the, the whole thing could have been handled a little bit better. Um, and I'm not in any means ba bashing their fragrance team, I just feel like the marketing side was not done very well. So, there you guys you go. Oh my god, I cannot talk. There you guys go. Thanks so, so much for watching. Follow me on Twitter, A the S Perfume, and Instagram, among the stars perfume. Links are in the description below, as always. And thanks so much for watching, guys. If you guys have requests for future videos, please comment below. I will do my best to do them. Um, always new reviews when I can and as soon as they're available. So, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Bye.